Tigers just landed Tulsa transfer guard P.J. Haggerty. Um, red shirt freshman, 21 and a half points, five and a half rebounds, 3.8 assists per game last season for the Tulsa Golden Hurricanes. And he was one of those guys. I swear, dude, last year, yeah. and you're a big Tigers fan too. So watching last year, every time we played and beat a an inferior opponent, it was always like whoever was the best player on that team, it was like, all right, is Penny going to go after this dude? Well, yeah. And you could always see in the handshake line. The handshake line, <laughs> if Penny – Told like, everything. I remember that guy. We, I re Devin, me, Devin, and Vernon, we were all texting during that Tulsa game. This dude was, like, freaking good, and we're like, yeah, Penny Penny going to probably go after him next season. And, like, the hand, the handshake in the, in the, uh, at, at the end of the game line, it was uh, a little bit extra – a little bit extra love uh -huh, there. A little hug, yeah. A little bit extra love there, and it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Penny knows. He knows. Yeah. Um. And so this is obviously a big development for a roster that's going to look different again. I mean, he had a bunch of seniors this past year, so uh, it's going to be a different roster. I still, again, I I still believe that. The method that he used this year, as far as going out and getting a veteran team full of seniors, is the right way to go about building a college basketball roster these days. Like, I don't think that that <clears throat> Penny shifting to this and going away from the five-star freshman was a bad move just because of how the season went. I just think he got the wrong group of guys. I, I think that they didn't the, – yeah. the chemistry wasn't there. Um, That's what's so weird is it was there, and then it wasn't. I mean, they were, you know, the number 10 team in the country. Like, they did. <laughs> they were that, good. <laughs> and that was the reason why. Is like, Penny, like, he scheduled what he did out of conference because he knew they have no chance at getting good wins in conference, really. Right. Like, FAU is, like, your only chance to get a quality win. So you schedule how you scheduled in the non-conference, and you play, the, the what, Atlantis, and you play Villanova, and you play Arkansas, and you play Michigan, and it turns out that Arkansas and Michigan weren't as good, but you're still playing those teams. You play A&M, you play Virginia, you play Clemson. You play Vanderbilt, who yep. also wasn't good either. And you did what you were supposed to do. It's insane because it literally, all, when we like got. Like, they were good in the non-conference. Like, they were good. Dude, when we got to conference play, the narrative was literally just, hey, just don't take bad losses. Just don't take any bad losses. Right. You'll be good. You'll, you'll have a top five seed. You may lose two, two games in conference. Whatever. Maybe a third. But you've got it. You've built up enough. Like, you're going to get yourself in the tournament. Yeah, and then that four-game losing streak happened. and uh, that, Then they lost a couple more. That was it. it that was, that it. was it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I just, I still think it's the right method. Um, I would. I. I think that there still is room. Me and Gary talked about this a lot yesterday because the McDonald's All-American game happened two nights ago, yeah. and I didn't even know. And it's because he explained it, and it makes complete sense. College basketball teams aren't winning with these guys anymore. You know, Kentucky got bounced in, yeah. in, in their first game because of this, this situation of you're bringing in all these five-star freshmen, and all these teams are old now. They're all made with you know senior transfers um, that have a lot of college basketball experience. And so that's where the, the sport's gone, and it's why we don't pay as much attention to these five-star freshmen. But I do still think there's a place in college basketball for awesome five-star freshmen that are yeah. going to be lottery picks, right? Um, for sure. And so I think that I th having like, that balance maybe, if, yeah. if, if you can get there. Because, dude, I mean, the team that Penny had with – with Jalen Duran and Imani Bates, like obviously they didn't get yeah. where you wanted to go, but that team had a lot of potential. Well, I, I think, um, yeah, like it, no, it had a ton of potential. But I know I think you've seen Gary's talked about this with Kelvin Sampson. How Kelvin Sampson is like, I I don't need a team full of five star, four star freshmen. Mm -hmm. Like I don't want three of those guys. You no. know, I want one. So like a year ago, like they had Jarris Walker, right, who was a lottery pick. But he's Jairus Walker with Jamal Shedd and Marcus Sasser and those other guys. Like it, it's, it's a lottery pick with veterans who know how we're going to play, and Jairus Walker falls in line with that. It's Gonzaga did it. They got Jalen Suggs and Jalen Suggs to go with the rest of yep, those guys. For sure. And they made the national championship game, and they lost to Baylor. And then even the year after that, it's Chet Holmgren. It's Chet. But he's with veterans. He's with Drew Timmy right. and Andrew Nimhard and those guys. Like he's with those guys. It's one of those guys with the rest of them. So, no, I think and and I think Penny was hoping for that this year with Mikey Williams. 
It was like, you have Mikey Williams, and then you've got these other guys, and then and, and Mikey wasn't here. Well, obviously, we know what happened with him. And then the, the chemistry just totally fell apart for this team. They yeah. were tough. Which, the, 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 the most disappointing thing about the Tigers this season, and it's cool, and we'll see with this trade. This is the thing that's got to change with them going in the next season, no matter who they bring in. This is what has to change. The one thing you have been, been able to count on with Penny's teams is they are awesome defensively. And this team was terrible defensively. The and I think it's I an anomaly. That, I'm with you. Yeah, because I, I'll be straight about it. Penny's offense is terrible. Like, it's not good. It, it, it just it looks its best when you have Jeremiah Martin or Kendrick Davis and the ball ends up in their hands with 10 seconds on the shot clock. That's And they bailed them out. That's when Penny's offense looks pretty good. Other than that, like, the offense is... It's whatever. It, or David Jones, <laughs> dribble, 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 mm. dribble, boom, and I'm going to nail a 15-foot fadeaway. But defensively, Penny's teams are always amazing, except for this season. They were terrible. Yep. They had no fight defensively. Yeah, and so that's something I think that clearly will improve this upcoming season um, just because we've seen more good defensive teams from Penny Hardaway teams than not. Yes, they're usually um, awesome defensively. He yeah. was a great offensive player. He knows defense. That's right. So he knows defense. He knows how to stop people on defense. Yep, so big news for the Tigers. They land Tulsa transfer guard P.J. Haggerty. He will be a Memphis Tiger next season. Good for him. The Gary Parish Show, live weekdays at 10 a.m.